This is the lecture for Chapter 2, Lesson 1, describing a location and a distribution. And the key question that I'd like you to keep in mind as we go through this is how can we compare data relative to its distribution? Meaning, how can I compare it um, relative to the other data? So percentiles are something we're all familiar with from test scores. Um, so they describe the percent of values less than a specific, specific value. So testing in the 90th percentile, that means that you've done better than 90% of the other test takers. Um, so quartiles are, uh, go ahead and correlate. They correspond to quartiles. Um, so quartiles and percentiles, Q1 is the 25th percentile, or one quarter of the way. The median is the 50th percentile, or the halfway mark. And Q3 is the 75th percentile. So that's one way to describe location in a distribution. Let's look at what that looks like on a graph that we call cumulative relative frequency graph. So this shows us our data or duration on the bottom, and then we see the percentiles plotted as it goes up, meaning that once we get to 100%, we know that 100% of our data is less than this value here, which appears to be about 5 and a third. Uh, we know that 2 here corresponds to 0.2, or 20%, so the 2 is at the 20th percentile. So 20% of my data lies here, between less than 2 and greater than this point, which looks like it's just maybe like 1 quarter, a little above 0. So these sum to 100 percent. Um, when you have a steep slope, that's indicating what about the data? Should indicate that there's, does indicate that there's a lot of data in that area. As it flattens out, the distance here to here, that means there's less data in that interval because the percentile jump is less. So when we have a big jump like here, we know we have a large amount of data here because we have from about the 50th percentile to about the 75th, so about 25% of our data is in this value from just above 4 to what appears to be about 4.5. So steep slope means a lot of data there. <clears throat> this is the data point, and it's percentile. So we call that a cumulative relative frequency graph. So another way to describe it is a z-score. So a z-score is a standardized score. What it basically tells us is how many standard deviations a point is from the mean. We calculate it by subtracting x represents the individual data point, subtracting it from the mean, and dividing by the standard deviation. So this tells us how far from the mean in terms of the rest of the distribution a point is. So the numerator gives us distance from the mean, the denominator standardizes it, standardizes it which is why we call it a standardized score sometimes, um, meaning telling us relative to the rest of the data how far is our data point x from the mean which is sometimes the mean will represent by x bar. So if we had a student who got a 93 on a test, and the mean test score is 80, with the standard deviation of 6.07, we take the value, 93, subtract it from the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. That means that student was 2.14 standard deviations above the mean. And 2 times 6 is 12, um, so 80 plus 12 is 92, and then we had 2.14 and 6.07, so it gets us up to 93. This just tells us the distance the student is from the mean in terms of the rest of the distribution. Uh, that'd be a strong score, a 2.14 to be two standard deviations above the mean. You're not going to see a lot of Z scores above three standard deviations above the mean. Most of our values will be within three Z scores above and three Z scores below, since distributions tend to be centered around the mean and the standard deviation takes into account the rest of the values. So standardized scores, z-scores, will be a huge part of our class. They describe how far something is from the mean in terms of the standard deviation of the data set. So let's take a look at how much of our data tends to lie within a certain amount of standard deviations. So here you can see we have a nice perfectly symmetrical bell curve, which we'll use. We call that normal, normally distributed around a bell curve like this. So what happens is here's our mean. It's centered around the mean, 64.5. 68% of our data will be within one standard deviation of the mean. So that means above the mean or below the mean. So this is for height and inches with a standard deviation of 2.5. So 64.5 plus 2.5 is 67. So 64.5 minus 2.5 is 62. So 68% of our data is between 62 and 67. One standard deviation from the mean. 95% of our data is located two standard deviations from the mean. That means the mean plus two times the standard deviation or 69.5, and the mean minus 2 times the standard deviation, or 59.5. So 95% of our data will be within two standard deviations of the mean. 
And finally, 99.7% of our data will be within three standard deviations of the mean, meaning the mean plus three times a standard deviation, or the mean times the mean minus three times a standard deviation. You can see very little. 0.3% or 0.15% on either side of the tail would not be included within three standard deviations. So a huge majority of our data will be located uh, with a z-score of three, which is three standard deviations above or three standard deviations ab below. So here, this represents a z-score of one because it's one standard deviation above the mean. Here, we're at two standard deviations, the mean z equals two. And here, z equals three. Conversely, on the other side, you'd have z equals negative one, one standard deviation below the mean for 62, z equals negative two, two standard deviations below the mean, and z equals negative three, three standard deviations below the mean. So our z-score is really telling us how far from the mean something it is, and uh, we're going to use it to determine how likely um, something is to occur in order to estimate what a true parameter is, meaning like what a true value is based on a sample we've taken. So this is a really important rule. Remember, it's 68, 95, 99.7. That's the rule, 68, 95, 99.7. And it's one standard deviation above or below, two standard deviations above or below, three standard deviations above or below. So let's look at what that transformation does to our data. So we're adding a constant. So here in case where it's like, uh, since we're subtracting the mean, consider it adding a negative or it's subtracting a positive is like adding a negative. So it would add a, the number we subtract or the number that we add to measures of center and location. So that means median, mean, and then location, quartiles, percentiles. Um, it doesn't change the shape of the distribution at all. The range, the IQR, and the standard deviation are the same. Um, multiplying or dividing, which is like multiplying. So we're, we're looking at multiplying by constant B. Dividing is just like multiplying by 1 over B. So it changes uh, measures of center, mean, median, quartiles, percentiles by B. So multiplying would change it by B. Dividing it would change it by mul multiplying by 1 over B or dividing by B multiplies uh, measures of spread. So if you multiply by a number, it's going to spread things out multiplying by that number or divide them. Um, and it would be multiplied by the absolute value of B because it's just spreading it out. Uh, spread can't have a negative value because you can't have a negative spread. It would not change the shape of the distribution. So this is really important stuff to go over here on what adding a constant does and multiplying a constant does. Take a second to reread this now. Pause and reread, please. So applying this to z-scores, we subtract the mean from each value and then divide by the standard deviation. That means we, we go through both of those transformations. Um, both we're adding a negative number, subtracting the mean, or, and we're also dividing or multiplying by 1 over b. So both of those things happen. That means the shape of the distribution of z-scores is going to be the same as the shape of the distribution of the test score, or the original test scores. The center is going to be zero since the mean is zero standard deviations away from itself. So the distribution is centered around the mean. So is our, our z scores will also, our standardized scores will also be centered around the mean, but the mean will then be zero because it'll represent the mean minus itself, which equals zero. And you can divide that by any number for the standard deviation and it will still equal zero. So z scores are always centered around zero, same shape as the original distribution. Uh, and since we divide by the standard deviation, uh, the standard deviation of the the z-scores will be 1. So if you're looking at a distribution of z-scores, you know the standard deviation is 1 for those scores. And that has to do with the fact that we divide by the standard deviation. So measures of spread are divided by that number. So any number over itself equals 1, which is why we get that number. So always plot your data on some sort of graph, a dot plot, a stem plot, a histogram. Um, I prefer the dot plot or the histogram. Look for the overall pattern, shape, center, spread, and outliers. Look at numerical summaries, like a five-number summary based on the box plot. Um, and so we can also look at a density curve, which is like a histogram with a smooth curve over it. Let's take a look at an example now. So here we have our density curve, meaning the percent of values that are within a certain range. So it's like you took the histogram and we just drew a smooth curve, just cutting out the corners up and back down. And the total area under it represents the number, the uh, frequency of values within the interval. So the tallest bar here indicates that most of our, more of our data is there than in any of the other intervals. So it's just like a histogram in that it counts the taller the bar, the more data is located in that interval. So the taller the area is, the more 
data is located in that area. So this is a density curve. Let's go over some facts about density curve. They're always going to be above the horizontal axis because they have to be positive. The total area under the curve is exactly 1 because it represents 100% of our data. Um, this is where there's some applications to calculus if you choose to use integrals. A density curve, it describes the overall pattern. Um, and so the overall area of the curve and above any interval of values shows the proportion of all the interval of all values that fall in that interval. Picture the median as being the point that divides the curve into two shapes of equal area. Left and the right would be even. Picture the mean as the balance point. If you put it on like a seesaw or like a very small point, the point at which the curve would balance if it's made of solid material. So that'll tend to be towards the uh, more towards the tail if we have a, a distribution that's not symmetric. Median and mean are exactly the same for symmetric curve, so the balance point and the the area that divides, the line that divides two areas would be in the middle there in the center. The mean of a skew distribution pulled towards the tail. Those are key things to note. Um, here is your multiple choice question. So this is, what are the shape and center of the distribution of z-scores in comparison with the original distribution of data? So keep in mind a z-score is where you take each value in the data, subtract the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. That shows, it, shows us how far data is from the mean in terms of the standard deviation of the data set. So it's comparing it to the other data there. Um, go back in the video if you need to, to see this or in the outline which is posted in Schoology. Uh, read over the summary for chapter two, lesson one and look at the vocab which is also posted. Pause this now so you have a chance to look at all of this, read through the examples and the uh, lesson in the book as well before answering this and going on to the free response.